a computer by the name of Eugene, because what other name would a computer have, uh, passed the Turing test, which basically means uh, it simulated humor, human conversation uh, as a 13-year-old boy. Uh, we've got a little more info for you. Uh, the Turing test, uh, which tests artificial intelligence, was introduced by Alan Turing in 1950. He predicted that computers would one day be able to be programmed to acquire abilities rivaling human intelligence. We're pretty much right there. A person engages in a text-based conversation with another person and a computer and must determine which is which. If they're unable to do so, the computer is deemed to have passed. Uh, it requires 30% of human interrogators to be duped during five-minute keyboard conversation. So I feel like we've all, before we get into the specifics of this, yeah. I feel like we've all had these experiences with these computers. Like if you go on to uh, like Time Warner chat to try to find something out, <laughs> and, you, and you literally can't tell mm. if you're talking to. So does this surprise you that this test has uh, been passed? Uh, what, I have been what I've been reading about this online is that this is a hoax. That this guy. Okay, so we'll, we'll get to that too. Okay, but, yeah, but the, take it away. Uh, no, yeah, this guy at Reading University is apparently infamous for these sort of things. I think he claimed to be the first human to be infected with a computer virus. Mm -hmm. and and that apparently oh. a lot of people have been sort of gullibly kind of reporting this story, but it's not true. So it, seem, it seems like it's half true, that apparently this did, it did actually pass, but there's some questions about his methodology the, or whatever. The validity of the panel. Right, so, one, so yeah. I don't want to get too focused on that, just more the bro sort of broader idea. By the way, real quick about Alan uh, Turing, uh, he was persecuted for homosexuality, and after he was convicted in 1952, uh, he was chemically castrated. Yes. Just a little, little something there. And, um, and after crazy. winning World War II, thanks very much. Yeah, no, no, he's one of the great gay martyrs of history. Yeah. And actually, there's going to be a movie about him starring Benedict Cumberbatch coming out this year. Really? So he's hopefully that and uh, I think a stamp will get him his due, I think. But yeah, no, wow, Alan Turing is a hero. What is it a hero? really smart gay people? Because the guy from A Beautiful Mind also, although the movie made it seem like right, yeah, he was yeah, straight, yeah, yeah. but right? Wasn't, wasn't he gay also? Uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're smart gay guys are good with numbers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So go, going back to this, without getting too much into the to the specifics of the test because it's a little unclear as we yeah. said. Mm. Um, when are the robots taking over? As I somehow ask on this show every week. Well, what's interesting is that Ray Kurzweil predicted that this would happen by 2029 and it's yeah. obviously oh, a lot well, sooner yeah. than that. But I think, I think that well, no, I mean, I, you know. That guy knows his stuff, Ray he's, Kurzweil. Yeah, he's oh, oh, I thought you meant Criswell, that, like, the Who's, 50s guy. You no, know, from no, Plan no, 9 no, from no. Outer Space, the <laughs> old TV psychic. Ray okay, never Kurzweil, mind. Ray Kurzweil, he's, like, the head of yeah, futurism uh, at Google. Oh, okay, then he probably does yeah. know what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. Singularity. I think we yeah. need to redefine how we how we define artificial intelligence. You know, I mean, obviously this is a test that was devised in 1950, so a lot of those ideas, you know, whenever they tried to predict the sure. future in the 50s, it, it ends up looking ludicrous uh, like today. Like well. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> well, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's, um, what's interesting is that uh, this device, what they told the, pa the jury panel that it was a 13-year-old boy and English was not his first language. Automatically, it was Ukrainian. It was yeah. Ukrainian, right. yeah. And uh, and so I don't think it's a surprise that that he won, you know. And but it was hardly a supercomputer; it was an algorithm that was designed to be a chatbot. And right. by the way, this isn't even the first time that that happened. There right. was a bot in 2011 called the Cleverbot that did this in in India. So again, when do the robots take over? Uh, I want a year. Uh, <laughs> I want I think, a date. I think it's neck and neck. Do the robots take over before or after we render the Earth uninhabitable to humanity? <laughs> You're going to be a great it's, Tom Cruise. It's, yeah, that's, I think, yeah. you know, it's, it's a, who's going to get there first? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, do you guys think that maybe some of this, like, I, I always talk about it as if the robots are going to take over. We did a thing on Google Cars last week. They won't even have steering wheels, so you'll be trapped in your cars and people will be able to hack into them. And then we're all walking around with these devices so they can watch us and listen to us, blah, blah. Uh, am I just totally alarmist on this? And that being said, I still do all this stuff, and I love yeah. it, and I think it's so cool, and I love all the movies about it. But is that just purely alarmist? That, I mean, uh, I, think, I think it's great. I think the idea of having driverless cars could potentially save us from having lots of accidents. I mean, there was a huge accident in the news over the weekend about a truck driver who hadn't slept for 24 hours and caused that huge pileup involving oh, right. Tracy Morgan, Morgan. Yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you know, Google is now, they're offering like, you know, cloud storage for autism research, which is supposed to be amazing. So I'm, I'm definitely like bullish on the future. I think that like technology has amazing things to offer. And, you know, it's, it's, it just gets sort of out of hand when the media takes something that's not really a story and, and, you know, blows it out of proportion the way they did with this supercomputer. But I do think that at the end of the day, 
we're heading in the right direction. Yeah. Do, do you agree with his? Yeah. I, you know, I, I I wish Google would stop censoring the Chinese internet, but they are obviously maybe making a lot of cool things happen. And I'm not. I, I don't worry so much about what we're what we're surrendering the technology as much as uh, I'm not kidding. I, I really wonder if if yeah. if Skynet is going to take over, yeah. if they're going to beat us to destroying the ozone layer and you know like making all the ice caps melt. Right. You know? Or mm -hmm. as in what happens in the Terminator movies and, and in like Wally that they'll have to enslave <laughs> us because we're the ones that are destroying the earth and it'll be against their written orders, their laws, and then uh, they'll have to turn on us. I, for one, welcome our new robot overlords. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> there you go.